the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. Well, fans, this main event is scheduled 12 rounds. It is for the WBC middleweight world title. First, we invite our fighters to the stage at this time, and we start with the challenger. Fighting out of Brooklyn by way of Ukraine, former Olympian, current number one ranked contender, here is Sergei, the technician Derevyanchenko. A lot of people thinking that if one Charlo were to lose, it would be Jamal Charlo to the Revianchenko. I'm interested to see this face off in this height. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to be here live and uncut after and all of these fights, as I always do for a pay per view. Wins, no losses. 22 wins coming by way of Go full knockout. screen. One of the sensational Please subscribe. Twin world champions from Houston, Texan, Texas, the WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jermall Hitman Charlo. Also going to be here for the post fight press conference tomorrow night as well. Well, the fighters are ready. Let's bring them to the scale at this time. WBC middleweight championship of the world. Weight limit is 160 pounds. First with a record of 13 wins, two losses. Ten of his wins coming by way of knockout. He's the hard-hitting number one ranked challenger, Sergey, the technician, Derevyanchenko. They're billing this as a double card, but it's really just one card, you know? You got to listen to Jamal Charlo on Chris Mannix's podcast. 159 and a half pounds for the challenger, Derevianchenko. 159 and a half. Derevianchenko is listed at 5'9". The two-division world champion making the third defense of his current title, the hard-hitting, reigning, and defending WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jamal Hitman Charlo. I think I think he's going to shine tomorrow. I think Jamel is going to have issues. One hundred fifty-nine and three-quarter pounds. He don't look dry or nothing. Charlo, one fifty-nine and three-quarter pounds. We have a fight. It's for the WBC middleweight championship of the world. I wonder if they're going to take like an intermission. Wait, we're ready for action. You can see the size difference between them. I think, as always, you can see that intense look in the Charlo's eyes. And this time it's Jamal. They, you know, they don't suffer any fools. They, they don't care about. Them. I wonder if they're going to get, you know, so basically we just did three weigh ins. Um, I wonder if we're going to get, um, um, you know, post fight interviews from these guys over at, you know, maybe with Campbell or somebody over the table. I don't know. But anyway, moving on. So. WBC 160 pound champion after being elevated because Canelo was elevated to franchise is just like, ugh, you know. So this is a great option with Sergey Derevianchenko because if, for one, I and a lot of other people had Derevianchenko beating Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin, so even if he just gets a unanimous decision, you know, even if it is a tough fight over Derevianchenko, he still did better than Golovkin. And, you know, that's going to be the measuring stick. Now, a lot of people are bitching and complaining about it being on pay-per-view. I get all that. That's your right. I'm not saying, you know, because times are hard, especially when you're used to getting the Charlos on Fox or, you know, regular Showtime. But in this case, they have matured. They have matured, you know, to the point where now they have graduated to pay-per-view. They make that, you know, that's the money that they make. So I'm wondering if we're going to get an interview or so. Even though I'm doing all these weigh-in videos live, like they're going on live through the um, Showtime live stream, still, I wonder if they're going to, you know, because basically this is supposed to be the end weigh-in for the first pay-per-view. And it's supposed to be the intermission with these guys, Brian Campbell, and Lord knows I forgot this other man's name. I know B-Rido. And then the next card is supposed to start that is Jamel Charlo Rosario. So let's go talk about the 160 pound division in while we're here. It's a little bit of a mess up there. And I'll explain why. Okay, well, we all know that I don't consider, you know, I'm sorry. It's my right, right? I don't consider the franchise championship uh, a championship. It's a status. So him and Loma have a status. They don't have the belt. So therefore, I don't really, it's hard for me to consider that. Here, let me mute right here because it looks like they're going to start over again and not give. Mauler interview. Well, I'm going to have to pause right here then. And just do it on my own time. Because we got to make our point. So, 
it looks like like in my opinion i can't like call like to to be mandatory I mean, to be undisputed it's going to put argument there because let's say for example if canelo goes on and we, can, we ain't gonna talk about Loma. we're gonna keep it at 160 and into your female let's say if canelo goes on to fight golovkin and then he goes on and beats him convincingly in a third fight and somehow some way andre gets his shot and canelo beats him still like some people are going to consider that consider that like undisputed but there's going to be a lot of hardcore fans you know and and writers and media people in general gonna look like but he still got to go back and beat jamal charlie because the franchise status is like you know, it's a little bit. It's kind of like the NBA with with the bubble situation with their championship. People call it like a like whoever wins the NBA Finals this year, like a Mickey Mouse championship, or kind of like that NBA lockout type deal. Not the same, but it's like the status of it. It's just like it's tainted. You know, a little bit. You kind of follow me? Maybe? maybe? No, you not follow me? Yes. Anyway, I was actually more interested in in Jamal Charlo versus Eubanks Jr., which was actually in the works. Or there were some preliminary talks. But if, you know, they can make this fight, then I see why they did it. By the way, Golovkin, we don't know when he's coming back. And Kamel Zermeda is his mandatory. So that, uh, that's oh, that's got to happen when he loses his belt that he's been trying so hard to hold on to and get back. Because that's a bargaining chip. Um, Canelo has had a meeting along with Golden Boy and The Zone and attorneys. And apparently he's being offered... 20 million dollars plus some other stuff to stay with the zone and there's an argument that pbc and top ranking esp and they can give canelo that money that's possible you know they can they they can they can scrape up that money and like you know i would but it's like can you consistently give him that for guys that he wants to fight that you know you may not make that money off of and also it would have to be pay-per-view you know, to make up all, all that. So basically, if you was, is, is, I, I don't, I honestly, in my personal opinion, I think that it's best that Canelo stays where he's at. I think that it's best that they work that shit out. Cause that get, even if he can make sure he get 20 million guaranteed and get like bonuses if he brings in subscribers, I guess what you're asking is what does this have to do with Jamal Charlo? Because if he wins convincingly, you know, like he's he's getting up there. It may not. I mean, he needs to win convincingly because, you know, Canelo, Golden Boy, all those guys are going to be watching because if somehow he ends up over at PBC, if somehow he ends up over at PBC, Charlo is already on pay-per-view. They're going to make him versus Canelo. It already makes sense. It's already the writings. They're going to give probably Canelo the fight that he won. Go ahead, fight yield him. We'll just give you 20 million to fight him. Even if you don't get no ratings or no pay-per-view, we put on pay-per-view, go ahead, go ahead, fight him. But they're going to be building up for him to fight Charlo or the Revian Chinko. You know? So, we're going to be here tomorrow night, live and uncut. By the way, it sickens me that you got Sergey, I mean, excuse me, Sergio Martinez ranked right there. I covered his fight, by the way, too. And Jaime Munguia is taking on Turiano Johnson, which is a very interesting fight. We haven't heard shit from Demetrius Andre. I know he had some money and promotional issues at the time, but it's like, remember, we could have got Charlo versus Andre fucking, what was that, more than five years ago? Five years ago about, maybe, give or take. Dennis Hogan is also rumored to possibly fight Jared Swift Heard. He has a three-fight PBC deal, rumored. We don't know if that PBC deal included the jamal charlo fight and it was the two options after that but there was always some, there was also some talk of him versus tim zoo or or dennis hogan versus jerry swift heard or um julian williams those are the rumors those are the rumors so yeah that just about wraps up 160 so i gotta move on to the next way in so you know what showtime has been on my not showtime but cbs they weird when it comes to the highlights so i'm gonna do my best Either way, we're going to be here post-fight, you know, and that's why I'm really considering going over to Twitch with my post-fight content because they don't fuck around with that letting people violate fair use and shit. Like, like CBS, basically, they've been harassing my channel, you know, just to show like 10 seconds of highlights, which is my legal right because I'm doing commentary and shit, but whatever. It is what it is. I'm Teach Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Please subscribe. A number one contender, Sergei Derevyanchenko. Look, here's what I love about your. Let, let me say something very quickly, if I may. In fairness to Derevyanchenko, he looks phenomenal. He oh, looks to be in absolutely 
first-rate He's been here before. He's yep. been to the title level twice not, before. Not new to this, true to We've this. We've established how close he's come to Danny Jacobs, to Gennady Golovkin. You know, different judges there at ringside. He